popular scene. You can see how they're sewn, sewn on the legs here. They're coming across at 90 degrees from the main body of the sling, as opposed to a general purpose sling where it comes down like that. And the advantage of this is that it's easier to tuck underneath the people. We've got a soft foam padding in the leg section, which is very comfortable for the patients. It stops the material from bunching up. It's nice and wide, so it gives a nice support for underneath the thighs. Um, at the back, we've got these handles here that you can pull onto when they're being lowered into a chair. You could hold onto these to guide them back into the chair. However, we've got different settings on the head section and on the leg section. And if you use the different settings, then you'll be able to get the patient into a good sitting position. So there's no need to pull back as I go down. We started doing this a few years ago, and we found that the having the patient in a good sitting upright position, that they weren't as scared as they were before. Before, when they were in a uh, reclined position, they're scared that they're going to, you know, they're floundering and falling out of it. But now that they're sitting upright, they can hold onto the straps and they can participate in the lift itself. Now, we've got here. Um, if you can, you come in on this, and I'll just show the numbering on the. Things. That'll do. Radio number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six up here. These are all different settings that you can put the sling onto, right? So when you put the uh, sling on for different patients, you might use a number three setting, or a number two, or a number five, depending on if you want them sitting upright or reclining back and also on the patient themselves where their weight distribution is. Uh, this sling is used a lot with double amputees and double amputees are always scared that they're going to fall backwards and the stumps are going to fall out of the hoist. S but by using this sling they can in fact have their hips higher than where the knees are so they're falling into the sling rather than falling backwards out of it. So it's a lot easier for the p nurses to put onto the patients, especially double amputees, because if they use a conventional hammock sling, they've got to virtually pick them up to put them into it, etc. Um, we've got padding in the head support here as well. And there's a row of stitching down the middle here so that when you fit the sling, you can see that you've got it lined up with the center of the spine at the back there. So i have got a chair ready. And here, yes, we've got a netting sling. This is the same design, only in netting. All the webbing you notice is sewn onto the outside of the sling. And the netting slings, the foam that's in the leg section is a special foam that won't absorb water. So when you lift the person out of the bath, it minimizes the amount of drips that you get coming down from it. All right, so that's a premier sling. We do do this sling. Uh, this is a normal medium sling. We do a medium wide, which is for the wider patients. We do a large. Now the large is for someone who would be about six foot two, six foot three, very tall and very wide. Um, if you've just got a wide person, don't buy a large, just get the medium wide and you find that will do. A lot of people, when they're sitting down, even though their heights might vary when they're standing up, when they're sitting down, they're only within two or three inches of each other because you're only measuring from below the buttocks to the top of the head, you're not including the height of the heads themselves. Right now then, I'm going to sit down, we bring the hoist over. I'm going to be the guinea pig this time, or the patient. And Dickie's going to assist me by putting the sling on. There we are. Have you got enough room behind there? Yep. Right. So we start off, ask the patient to lean forward, or help them to lean forward. And just tuck it down at the back, around by the coccyx area. And move the hoist out of your way. And then, one little tip I like to do is to lift the patient's leg up. Can you show that, James? So, Vicky is kneeling down in front of me, and by resting my foot on her leg, she's not having to take the weight of leg, and it gives her plenty of room in here to get the sling leg around. Just pull the sling leg around, and that's it. Right here. And then, go on, change legs, and we do the other one. Right here. Now, we just stop there for a moment and I'll just show you a couple of things that you can do with this. Get this level. You could put these two pieces of webbing through each other and that will lock them together. 
all right? So when you pick me up, you can then, and I hold on to the side pieces, you can open and close the legs without putting any pressure on the legs at all. The quick way is to just cross it over like that. That that might cause a bit of pressure down here on the legs. So it's a nice thing just to loop it through and then they're held nicely. Another way of doing it, if you can bring the hoist in now. Alrighty, I've got a look. Um, we could cross over these green ones, and that holds the hips in, and the leg sections could just go straight up to the same side. Another way of doing it is to I'll move that out of the way, convert it into a hammock sling, putting that one under there, that one under there, and then we have a hammock sling with these two coming up on either side, and that can be quite a comfortable sling for someone who may have had some operation and they're sore on the sides or something like that. The disadvantage is that the legs are held together and they're not opening up, of course. Right then, so we go back to the... Now, while we've got it here, let's do a hammock lift, save mm -hmm. having to move everything backwards and forwards. Right, now, there are three hooks provided on the sling itself. And I'll put this onto the third one Now you notice that I'm swinging backwards a bit, I can lean back into this. And that's because Vicky has put me on the, sh the longest hook on here. Right, turn me around, and you can see... Right, and around a bit more. So, this is in the hammock version of the sling. Difficult to get in if you want to wash in between the legs. A bit difficult to get in like that, but otherwise a very comfortable sling. And, you know, I can hold on to this, put my hands down there. If I was a hemi, I'd have my arms inside. But it works quite in a comfortable manner. Um, I'm, I can support my own head. If not, I'd be lying back like this. With some people, you might like to put a, a small pillow in behind the head which would make them more comfortable. So if you'd like to lower me down again now, Vicky. It's very popular with double amputees because of the padding under the legs. Did you notice then how the hoist moved in? One of the things I like doing is leaving the brakes off on a hoist. You can stop it. Um, by leaving the brakes off, it means that you can very easily move it out of the way after you lower the patient down, and less chance of the nurses or the patient damaging themselves against the hoist. There are two schools of thoughts about this. Some people like to have, have the brakes on, and some like to have the brakes off. But I'm of the opinion it's better to leave the brakes off, because when the hoist is on level ground, it's not going to run away anyway. It's just going to stand there until you're ready for it. When you're picking up, if you have the brakes on, the person is lifted out of the chair if the hoist isn't forward enough. Whereas if the brakes are off, the hoist will just creep in towards them until their centre of gravity is directly below the um, spreader. spreader bar here, and that will uh, take them up in a nice even pool. I've forgotten the word then for a moment. Rightio. So, look, this time I've put the leg straps We've got the sling on there. Uh, put it on the on the middle hook. Try it on the middle hook so I'm not too upright. That'll do fine. Okie dokie. Right, 
watch the hoist, it's coming in. Now, I swung a little bit when I came up then, but otherwise it's fine. I just turn myself around here. Now you can open up the legs or close the legs, whatever you like. If you want to do washing after toileting, you can open up the legs there and wash in underneath. There we go. And you can do all the washing and then keep it over. But they're not going to splay open by themselves. If you have a hemi, they could have their arms inside. Another patient might like to hold on to the straps. But the fact that I'm sitting pretty upright, I can see what's going on. Um, you've got the straps crossed over in front of you. You feel you're not going to fall out of it. We've got this on the third loop down on the legs here. If that was on the first loop, the very first one, my knees would then be lower than my buttocks, which is going to be very good for the double amputees. As it is now, if you take me back sideways, you can see I'm sitting as if I was sitting in a chair. Now, if you lower me down into the chair, even though I've got a slight recline back here, I should go into the chair all right. That's it, right here. And can you do that again and take me up again? Um, and lower me down. I don't think there's any need, if you just position the chair correctly, there's no need to hold on to the straps at the back. Can you go around the back and hold the chair? That's enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think there's any need to touch those straps. No. Can you go down on my bottom and come in close, James? Yes, I've gone straight down into the chair. Fine. And just watch your head as it comes down. Get it down. First thing, get all the straps off as quickly as you can. And then get the hoist out of the way. Another reason for having the brakes off on the hoist. You can get it clear. The patient isn't going to rock forward and hurt themselves. Now that was having the legs put through like this. Can you just show this, James? Coming close, so we've got one, thread it through the other one. So we just thread through like that, and then they hook up. Now, showing it another way, can you bring the hoist in again? Third one down on the legs, and third one across over on the green ones. and second one on the back there. Right, one, two. Pick me up again. That's it. Now this time we've got the outer straps, hip straps here, the green ones, are coming across. See how they cross over there? Now that's holding my legs in a little bit tighter than the last time, but you can still open up the legs for washing. But it just keeps the legs in neatly there. And some people feel more secure that they've got that holding around there. And once again, they've got the webbing in front of them, they can hold on to the webbing. And I'm sitting pretty upright, if you just turn me around sideways. Now, will I go back down to the chair? Yes. And if you position the chair correctly, there may not be any need for holding the strap again. Yes. And you can see the toileting hole just there. So if I was going onto a toilet, you can lower me down. That's not bad. Yeah. Right here. And the last one, we can do here is in a recline position. I'll leave that third one on there. Let's stop. I'll put this back on. If you can put that on the very first hook mm -hmm. on the back. Oh, this is right. Yep, and the back one on the longest. Loop. That's it. Radio. Now this is if you want to pick someone up in the recline position. Now this time I'm really reclined back. And some people might be happier going up like this. Though I've found since we've introduced this sitting upright that 
a lot of people prefer to be sitting upright. Can't really see the recline position because I'm face on. I have to go sideways around. How's that? Does that come out? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that could be good for going into a fallout chair or something like that because we're already in that position. Okie dokie. Right, so that's using the first loop on the hooks here. Can you go in on that, James? Right, the very first loop as opposed to the second or the third loop down. The closer you are to the sling, the more upright the person will be sitting. Okay? Now this time, can you show Vicky who's going to have to hold the straps as I go down? Radio. And now we've got another effort. One thing that happened the other day, we had someone who really wanted the patient to be quite horizontal as they pick them up. So they used a shorter leg strap on there and they put a pillow in. Where's the uh, pillow gone, Vicky? We could see you crawling across under there. Yeah. And we put this pillow in the back here, just like that. And then the sling went in. And that meant that their back wasn't bowing. I found it very comfortable when I was experimenting with it. So it's something to think about when you're having to move a patient who may need that extra uh, support when they're lying more horizontally. Right, if we can come out of this one and we'll show another type of sling. One of the things that we've done, not too often, but it is not an unusual request, is to put a woolen lining inside the sling. Can you just come in here, James? And this has been very good for people who've got fragile skin. This wool material, which is a genuine sheep's wool, on a knitted background, especially made for medical use, um, so you can wash it without the problems associated with sheepskin, we normally use this for heel pads, elbow pads, pressure care items, bed pads, etc. But we can line the inside of the sling with the wool, which for some people who've got very delicate skin, that has been a nice thing for them. Right, now, next thing we're going to show you is a little tip about picking up from the floor. And what I do, just to speed things up a bit, instead of me being rolled over, on the floor, I'll lie down on top of the sling, which saves the girls a bit of time. Right, girls, if you'd like to come in position here. Here I am on the floor. Um, can you just move over a little bit, Inika? Flat out. Now, all the girls have to do is hold onto these straps and take the weight, you're kneeling down, and they can help me. Uh, Inika, I think you're blocking the camera, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, hold, it, hold it again, and we just keep a an eye on the camera. Uh, now, now, you can put your hand in the loop there, so you don't have to use your little finger muscles. Just no, one hand, one hand in the loop. Right, one, two, and lean back. Three. Radio. Okay, you got me upright. Now, Vicky's going to get that chair, turn it upside down, and lean me back against the chair. Radio, in you go. You can go now. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, here's the patient. They're reclined back in the chair here. They can get their breath back. They've got time to recover. Obviously, before you do this, you know, a nurse would check them out to make sure that it's all right to move the patient before starting. But now the other nurses can get busy and they can get the sling prepared and the hoist in position. Right, so you come forward, come forward, and lower the hoist down. Right. Radio. And as you can see, this hoist goes down very low. Number three on the green, and I'm putting the green on the side. Number three on there. Number two on the back. And if you can have a look at my feet, James. 
earlier, Nurse Vicky has put, placed my feet over the end of the hoist so that she can get the hoist in nice and close. And here we go, we're going to pick up. Now you could pick me up and put me back into bed again. But the chair's coming free now. Turn the chair around the other way. Put the chair in position and lower me down into the chair. Remove the sling and we're done.